Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is going to be part two of the competition between me, my mate Vince and Tronix Fix. So in the first part I fixed up this Mark's motorway wind up little car set thing. It was like a kind of, if you imagine, an early scare electric sort of job. And Steve did a speak and spell. So I'm not sure yet what Steve actually uh, sold it for. But with me, I bought this set originally for £18.95. I didn't have to spend any money on it. I had to use a little bit of glue and stuff, but that's stuff I already had around the house. So that's not going to be included in the actual cost because I didn't actually have to buy anything major for it. If you're using things like sellotape, glue, blue tack, that sort of stuff, then that's not actually gonna be added up towards the final cost, unless obviously you have to buy some specialist glue to do the job. Now, I sold this in total for £21 plus £7.99 postage, so that's £28.99. So, 18.95 and sold it for 28.99. You've got to remember that I've got to take all my postage fees out of that, the eBay and PayPal fees. And not to mention time. Obviously, we're not charging ourselves for time in this, but you can see really there's not much money there. But there definitely is still a little bit of profit. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding up all the profit as we go along through these five items and whoever makes the most profit at the end will be the winner overall. So now... Although this one was successful because it did make a profit, let's hope now that part two will be a better success. So sit back, put your feet up, and I hope you enjoy this one. Right, okay, so here we have it, the second one in the big competition between me and Steve from Tronix Fix. So let's open it up. When I bought this, I didn't actually think about resale, but this is gonna cost me an absolute fortune to post. If, if, obviously, if I do repair it, but I think this is going to be uh, a really interesting one. I'm really looking forward to this one. Now, obviously, it's a toy before 1980. I might actually keep that box because if I do repair it, I can post it in the same box. Right, let's see now. I never had one of these when I was young. They were really expensive. Mm -hmm. The box looks quite badly damaged. Now, are you ready? Ta da Look at that. Chuck Connors, Tin Can Alley. This, I believe, is the original one from 1976. So this here is exactly the same age as my good self. And apparently it's faulty. So let me show you the list. And I had to pay a lot of money for this one. And this was recommended to me from one of my other videos from a viewer. They thought it would be a good one. And I never thought about doing something like this. But yeah, I think this is going to be a good one. So here we have it here. You can see it says Tin Can Alley, Game Shooting 40, Solder Scene, Spares Repair, Xmas Project NR, which I think means no return. Now, unfortunately, I had to pay £22. There was nine people bidding, so these things are quite rare now. And uh, postage was huge, which is understandable, £14.95. So in total, I had to pay £36.95. Not sure if I do get it working, if I get it working, whether there's going to be any profit on it or not. I hope there is going to be because there's not many of these for sale. So plenty of pictures and it says here, vintage, highly sought after Tin Can Alley shooting game. This is sold as spares or repair, untested. Somebody will get this fixed working including Pepsi cans. A bit weird that it says untested, but then it's sort of confirming that it's not working. It says uh, some Pepsi cans may be dented. Boxes tatty too. 
no instructions but simple to use every kid wanted this so highly desirable again sold as seen in non-working condition with tatty box yeah not 100 percent sure what i make of that description there it's a bit a uh, bit vague doesn't really say what's wrong with it but you know beggars can't be choosers there was, weren't really many of these to choose from i think this was the only faulty one and the uh, working ones are really expensive but again i don't need a working one do i for this series so let's open it up and we'll see what it's like on the inside and try to verify what the fault is. Now with this I've never had one, never used one to my knowledge. I don't remember using it around any friend's house as a, uh, uh, when I was a child. So, right, it said the box is tatty but the actual cardboard part of it looks pretty, looks pretty good. Let's just have a quick look at the size. So it says sights like a real rifle, cocks like a real rifle, perfectly safe, shoots only a beam of light, light activated electronic target fence. Okay, so it's done by light. I wasn't sure about that. Tin can alley. Hold on a minute. It says here 1983. CBS Toys, a division of CBS made in England. This was supposed to be the 1976 one. And there's a, uh, a number there. Catalogue number. Oh, I'm wondering now. Hold on now. I wonder whether this is before 1980 or not. I thought this was supposed to be 1976. Hmm. Do you know what? I'm going to have to do a little bit of research on this one. So bear with me a minute. Right, okay, well, I've checked online. I mean, there's not a huge amount of information, but I've looked on eBay, and these are being sold as vintage 1976. The box have the Dr. Pepper cans on them, and then the inside of them always show the Pepsi Cola cans on the UK one. So I'm not 100% sure what's going on here, because, you know, as far as I know, this came out in 1976. Do you know what I think it might be? Maybe this was in production for like 10 years or something like that. And then on the box, I suppose they had to update the copyright. So this set might be from 1983. But as far as I'm concerned, it's still valid for the competition because it was made, it came out in 1976. So for example, you would be able to do a big track in this competition, which came out in 1979. But the one you're buying, it could be from 1982. You're not going to know, but the toy itself came out in 1979. So with this one, I'm happy. It came out before the 1980s, even though it looks like this one, according to the box, is 1983 or possibly 1984 or 1985, because we don't know when the toy was actually sold. But the thing itself was manufactured before the 1980s. So uh, I'm going to run with it. I'm sure Steve from Tronics Fix isn't going to have a problem. If it was the reverse, I wouldn't have a problem with him doing it. So uh, yeah, not, not, a, not a great start, but nevertheless, it's still an old toy that came out before 1980 and it's supposed to be faulty, but we don't know what the fault is. So now, uh, these are the cans. And they are in remarkably good condition. I mean, this one here is dented. If I, even now, I feel like <laughs> I feel like I want to crush them. So, uh, if this was owned by me as a child, 100%, these would have been uh, these would have been all dented. Oh, there we go. Just like that, these would have been all dented up. So now let's just find out exactly what this what this thing is. Oh, look at that, that's made out of metal there. That's quite nice. So you, basically, sorry, I've missed out a bit. Chuck Connors, this is the guy on the on the cover. He was, uh, I think he was American, American-Canadian. I presume he's American. And, uh, yeah, basically, he starred in a series called The Rifleman, which is basically where he was a really good shot with a rifle. And I know in one of the episodes he was like up, I think it was the first one, he was up against somebody else with like a pistol, but yet he would have won with the rifle. So he was kind of famous for his rifle. So obviously they would have paid him quite a bit of money to uh, have his uh, picture on the cover of this. Right, okay, so we're going to have to work out basically how this thing works. So it's done via a light, which I'm assuming is going to be this thing here. And it looks like you've got to aim 
But where do you aim? Oh, I know. Right, OK. So, look, there's something here. Can you see that there's some sort of little sensor in there? But obviously there's nothing there. This thing must move along this track. Maybe you have to... Just... Oh, here we go, look. Yeah, there we go. So you can move it yourself manually. So basically, you need to line it up, or I, I presume it does it automatically. And then there must be some kind of sensor in here. It does look like there's some little thing in there now. I'm not too sure. I'll put batteries in it and see what it does. Uh, it says here, very bright lights, windows or lamps shining directly into the knot hole could set off the electric eye mechanism. Position fence so that the mechanism can be activated only by the beam of light from the tin, cali, uh, tin can alley rifle. So basically what it is going to be is it's obviously done by light. So I presume this is going to work better in a dark environment. Fence must be facing directly towards the person firing rifle, not at an angle. And rifle must be at the same height as fence so that full light beam goes through the knot hole. To preserve batteries when the game is not in use, move the target mechanism to storage position. To storage position, right, I suppose that must be off. I don't know, this must be off, maybe you store it to the left hand side, haven't got a clue. And it says use uh, fresh regular batteries. Well, okay, so that all seems pretty, pretty simple enough. So obviously this thing moves along and it knows how far to advance. Looks like there's quite a bit of corrosion on the screws there. Now when it comes to the gun, it looks like we're missing the nut and bolt, and this is hiding somewhere else. So there should be a nut and bolt that goes through here. That's a little bit annoying that that's missing. But that's going to... But that just looks... That looks incorrect, but that's the only way it fits on. Right, so I'm going to have to get some sort of bolt for there. Looks like the batteries go in this bit here and there's a few screws to hold it together. Well, I think what we'll do to begin with is, let's see what batteries it takes, and then I can concentrate on one thing at a time. So basically, that looks like it's gonna be the complicated thing, the fence. This, I'm thinking, every time you press the trigger, is just gonna emit some light from here. Maybe the bulb's gone, maybe that's why it's not working. Not sure. Or maybe it's the uh, mechanism here, when you press the button, it's not pressing something on the inside. Right, let's move these cans away in this box because it's quite delicate. Oh, it's got, it's got a battery in it. Oh, it just takes a normal bulb. Fantastic. So that means that is going to be replaceable. So hold on, does it work when I press the trigger here? No, it doesn't. Right, okay, so maybe the problem is just with the... Maybe the problem is just with the gun itself. I'm just going to check this battery for life. Put it to DC volts on my multimeter and see what it's reading. Right, 9.7 volts, so there's definitely enough voltage in there. So, let's not worry about the fence for the time being. Let's just concentrate on this gun. See what's going down with it. Hey, imagine my luck might be in today and it might be just a bulb. It is possible, isn't it? So, what we're going to do is, let's unscrew this bulb. Oh, hold on, it just pops out like that. Be gentle with it. I've lost it. I wouldn't say that this would really emit much light. I bet the room has to be quite dark for this to work properly. Right, can I see? I'm just going to hold this up to the light. Yeah, I can see the filament in there. So to check the bulb, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the multimeter to continuity. So when I touch the wires together, they're going to beep. So now if I go onto the outer bit, doesn't matter which wire, and the middle bit, if it beeps, it means I've got continuity. So there's nothing wrong with that bulb. So there's something wrong with something else on here. Now I'm thinking it's going to be quite a simple affair, I'm thinking it's just going to be the battery plugged into here, then when you press the trigger it sends voltage to this yellow and white wire here. So let's pop the battery back in. Yeah, I think that's back in. And now again, DC volts. Oh, 
and let's go on to here and here and now let's press the trigger right can you see nothing's happening on the multimeter there so it's not getting the 9 volts from the battery that's if this bulb is 9 volts just seeing if it says anywhere on it that's strange I can't see any voltage marked on that anywhere but I think it says D1 or something like that can't really, uh, can't really make it out Hong Kong D1 or something not sure well okay so let's take this gun completely apart and see if we can work out what's happening with it Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is going to come off, and there's ah, excellent. It's going to come off, and it's going to reveal two more screws. Good. When does it come all the way off? I suppose it has to, doesn't it? Otherwise, well, maybe not. Let's undo the screws and see what happens. That doesn't want to go any more than that. Well, it definitely doesn't want to. Definitely doesn't want to come apart easily. I can't push that down the other way because it's in a groove there. Surely it has to come off this way. Ah, oh, there we go. Right. Luckily, I didn't break it. Yes, it is. It's coming apart. I wonder if there's a there's going to be a cap at the end here as well, isn't there? And this one doesn't want to move. I wonder, can I? have a look on the inside oh we've got a massive capacitor well do you know what i don't have to worry about taking that end off I, that might even be glued doesn't seem to be any play in that that might be glued into place but look i can still get into here anyway so it doesn't actually make a difference so we've got when we press the trigger just want to make sure i know where everything goes before i start pulling it all apart so when we press the trigger here it's moving. What's it doing? Let's take that out. When we press the trigger, it must be moving this up here. And then that should be hitting that contact, but I bet it's not. I bet this is just all misaligned here. Looks like there's plenty of grease in it. Oh, look, the spring's come out, hasn't it? Look down here. Look, that, was, that was just in here like that. Well, the spring's moved now. But, look. It looks like the spring goes into this part here, I think, in here, and it wasn't. It was pointing down that way. So if we were to put that in, the spring into this bit here, off the plastic, let's zoom right in. It's a bit awkward because I'm having to hold the gun open. But let's take it all out. Right, so very simply, we have a contact up the top here. And can you see we've got a white wire and a yellow wire and the red wire goes off to the capacitor. I just want to see what this capacitor does. So we've got the green lead coming out of the negative of the battery and it goes to one leg off, the, it goes to the positive on the capacitor and then we've got the white lead coming out of the positive of the battery that goes over to this, this little copper disc thing here and then we've got the yellow lead going off to the... Uh, one of the prongs for the light and oh look sorry the white lead for the other part of the light goes to the negative of the battery there so what happens is when we press let me just work this out here when we press that against here maybe they both have to press 
Oh, the red lead's connected to there. So the white lead is always there. Hold on now. Zoom out a bit. I should, I should have got this sus by now. So we have the uh, the white lead, the positive, goes to this one here. So this is going to be positive. And then when this one touches it, it means the red's touching it, which goes through the capacitor, which goes to the negative. And then, so when this hits against it, it must touch both of them up at the same time. That sounds a bit dodgy, touching them both up. But basically, that must touch both of the discs at the same time to complete the circuit, and then the light comes on. So I think what we'll do is, because nothing looks broken in there and it all looks nicely greased, I think we'll try and put this together. So that obviously goes in there, and this goes in here. Like that. And then, the, oh, look, 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 look. And then this thing here must hook onto, must hook onto there, does it? Go all the way and hook onto there, possibly? I'm not sure. Let's pop it in and see if we can make out what's going on. Uh, so when you cock it back, when you, whoa, 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 right, okay, yeah, I think I've got it. When you cock it back, it hits this one up, then when you fire it, it must release, it must hit the, uh, it must hit the uh, contact against the wire that goes off to the yellow one. It's a shame I can't open it fully, and then it will be clearer on the video. So that's going to go like that. I then have to put the other the metal thing in together because that's all going to be part of it as well. Right, I'm just going to get a kitchen towel because I'm getting all the grease on my hands. Right, it's nice that this is all made out of metal. Trying to work out. So when? Oh yeah. Look. So basically, do you remember I said about that plastic uh, latching onto that bit? So when you cock it that way, it's going to move this right the way back, so it latches into place. And then it's quite a powerful spring. Because the thing is, it's not actually fire anything apart from a bit of light. So I'm kind of wondering why they've done it. it must be they've done it so powerful to make it feel like a real gun. I think. Right, so this goes here, and then when you cock it back, it moves this plastic thing back so that the latch at the end here latches onto there. Let me get the camera off the tripod and I can try and show you. Right, okay, so can you see this thing here? It pushes the whole plastic thing back, and then it latches onto that latch there. So this top little triangle bit here, this bit here where my finger's pointing at. Sorry I can't do it with two hands because I've got this thing sort of wedged open. And that latches on to that bit of the latch there. And then so the whole thing's ready to fire. And then when you fire, you're going to press the trigger, which is going to push this bit forward. And it must then move ever slightly. So what happens is it then, look, it moves up ever so slightly like that, which then releases it 
from the uh, releases it from that thing and as this flies forward it makes contact with that red wire there makes contact with the yellow disc I think that's how it works so that looks to me as if it's back together everything's in its place so now in theory we should have Right, it's not wanting to close. Right, okay, so something's not lined up right. There we go. Right, so when we cock it like that, there you go, did you hear that? And then once you push it back, there we go, that sounds a lot better. So now let's pop the light in and I bet it lights up. lit up for a second there I think right so let's zoom out so we take it out cock it so that's now got the spring compressed put it back in and now fire and did you see the flash there oh lovely in fire and would the capacitor be there so it gives it all the energy straight away just in a quick flash would that be why it needs the capacitor rather than just quickly tapping against a battery? Maybe it needs to be more instant. Maybe that's what the capacitor does. It charges it up so it's ready to just release all those 9 volts. Or, I don't even know how much volts this is. Maybe it's more than 9 volts. It releases it all within like uh, you know half a second or whatever it is. Right, brilliant. So now the gun appears to be working. So what I'll have to do now is see if the fence is working. But I'm happy that I understand this. So I'm going to put this back together. What we do need to find is a nut and bolt to go through here. I'm not going to have them in my house, but I might be able to get one from my dad's shed or possibly maybe I could buy one, you know, buy a pack of them or something. Uh, right, OK, I'm going to put this all back together. Again, to me, it seems really nicely made, that that thing's made out of metal, because that's the thing that's going to get the most, the most strain. And also, it gives a nice bit of weight to this. I've got a feeling my son's going to like this, because it kind of feels real. Apart from the fact that this is all plastic, but you know what I mean. It's got the weight of it that feels real. Okay, that's there. Quite interesting to see how accurate this is. I wonder if you were like even five centimetres off, would it still work, or does it have to be nearly perfect? Might as well leave that battery in it. In fact, I will need to. There, there was a tiny bit of corrosion on one of those uh, battery things there, so I will need to sort that out. Very closely, you can see it's a bit blue on top and just in the middle as well, so I'll just have to use a bit of IPA cleaner on that later on. I'll display that one there. So take it out, cock it. Put it back and then we should see the light light up there we go brilliant lovely right okay so that's that sorted now let's have a look at this fence thing here which I think is going to be a lot more complicated see what's going on with this find out what monster sized batteries this thing takes right pull and lift out to open pull Not a very nice way of doing it. Definitely got a bit of corrosion in here. Well, not really corrosion, just kind of like, just feels a bit greasy. Yeah, there's a bit of corrosion on that one there. But that's okay, that won't take long to clean. Right, I don't actually know what size batteries these are. I don't know if they're C or D. Uh, looks like it takes three of them. They look like D batteries to me. Let's see if it says on the... 
It says SP2 batteries. I don't know what an SP2 battery is. SP2. I'm just going to Google that. Okay, SP2 batteries are basically D cell batteries. I believe they were ever ready ones. They look like a lovely blue colour. So let's pop these in and see if it will work even with that little bit of corrosion on it. Sounds like it just wants to do something. Right, let's uh, turn it. Let's move it along and see what it does if I turn it on here. No, okay, but to be honest, I don't really know how this works. So I've got the batteries in. This looks like you can move it along to where you want it to go. And it's got this kind of ski ramp thing here where it falls into place. So, oh, that's what knocks the Pepsi cans off. There you go. Look, did you see? Hold on. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Right. So as you're going along, it pushes the spring down and then it will release it and a white thing. So watch this hole here now. Watch a white thing pop up. Ready? Ready? Hold on. Oh, why didn't you do it? Oh, give me that one. There you go, did you see there? So, and now watch this one here. Uh, it's hard to see, but basically, it's, it, there's a white thing that comes flying up. There you go, that thing there. Right, okay, why is this not working? Or maybe... Maybe you just start shooting it and it just starts starts working. Or have I got it? It says off, off that way. So this must be on this way. Let's just point the gun straight at this first one and see what happens. It went there for a second, didn't it? Let's see what happens now. Okay, so I aimed too high that time, even though I was about 10 centimetres away from it. And again. I wonder how sensitive it is. Well, that was certainly on it, and it didn't do anything. That was right on it. Let me put the switch to the other side. Right, okay, so nothing's happening there, is it? So it doesn't look like it's just a gun. Again, I could be using it wrong, but I don't think I am. I've tried the switch in both positions. I mean, but there's an arrow saying off, so surely that should be off and that should be on. But let's take this thing apart because it'd be interesting to see the inside of it anyway to see exactly what it looks like. Oh, here we go. There you go, it did it then, didn't it? It kicked into life. Right, so does that mean now... Let's try it now. No. There we go. Yes, and it kicked, but why is it not going further? It didn't move on to the next one, did it? But it definitely kicked. Definitely kicked. Right, okay. Uh, so I wonder, how do you get this thing started? I think we need to take it apart so we can understand the inside of it but there definitely was a bit of life there but can you see it didn't move all the way onto the next track it just stopped it kind of wants to go at that angle so when I moved it before it moved on as well didn't it there you go but that's not right it shouldn't be doing that so we're going to turn it off it could be just bad 
contacts on the battery. So to begin with, we're going to clean the contacts on the batteries, the battery terminals, this one here in particular. And then we can put it back together again and see what it's like. I'm just going to get a fiberglass pen and all I'm going to be doing is rubbing this one here. I'm going to rub all of them, clean them up a bit because they all look a little bit dull, especially this side. And it could be as simple as that. And then clean them with IPA. Scrape. Now I'm going to clean them with IPA. Right, okay, so that looks a little bit cleaner than it did before. Now what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to take this apart because I would like to see the inside of it anyway. So let's pop it all open and see if we can work out what's going on with it. So that's just a simple on and off switch there, which is moving this thing against a contact down below. So that is just, oh, right, okay, I see. It's just a little wedge that actually wedges under here to lift it up. Underneath here, it's hard to see, but there's another little copper contact underneath that one. Underneath that one there, so that might need a clean. So we have the motor, the resistor here. What's this thing here? Is this thing... Uh, I don't know, some sort of voltage regulator or something. I want to know where the actual site is because I want to see what that looks like. So let's take this apart further. I think we're going to have to take off this big track here. See if we can slide it along. There should be another one. Here we go. Oh, uh, look, it's. Uh, quite broken here isn't it oh no I hope that's not going to cause a problem looks like it's been sat there for so long that there's problems or maybe the battery leaked right onto this bit here off the track you can see just here I don't know if you can see that because it's so white but it kind of looks there you go looks like it's been eaten away a little bit That's the whole thing out. So now we can just concentrate on this. Yeah, you can see there. I bet you the batteries caused that by leaking onto it. It's really, oh, it's just eating away. I better be careful. I wonder how soft that actually is. No, not too bad. It's just on the surface. Right, I should be able to scrape that away then. Right, so we're going to have to work out what's going on. So this is the thing here that makes it jump up. And it's on a spring. Can you see there's a spring here? So the ski jump thing that I said earlier, remember these things here? That must force it down like this. And then when this must be like that, and when it's in the right place, that touches that metal thing and flings this up or something? I don't know. But I'm thinking more about what the site is. Where is the site? So this is the only thing in here, isn't it? It must be this component in here must be able to tell when the light is on it. it must be as simple as that and the reason you have to make sure remember the instructions said that the gun has to be perfectly straight is because look if it was at the angle here it wouldn't probably bounce off into there so I wonder is that working or not really we should be able to get some batteries in there and then we should be able to just point shine a light in it and we should hopefully see this thing move along not quite sure how it knows when it's at its next level it must be something to do with Not sure. Uh, let me just see if does this move all the way along. So this releases it like that. And allows it to go forward and back. Uh, Ah, 
Ah, perfect. Look, here, can you see? There's a little indentation there, there's a little indentation here as well. And it's those indentations that break this from that. So now when we move off it, so when we shoot it needs to move to the next one, can you see it's, uh, it's now, well it's supposed to touch that, but I don't know if it is touching that or not. Let me just push this back the other way because I've gone too far. So look, it's touching it now, touching it now, so it's going to be giving it power. Touching it, touching it, touching it, and then when it goes to that next one there, it stops touching it. But when you shoot it, I wonder how it knows to start the motor again. It must just start the motor initially until it starts touching it, and then it, it goes off on one again. Well, I mean, it all looks okay. It doesn't look like there's any grease in here from day one, unless it's all worn away. Uh, contact here. So this is the this is simply the on and off switch here. This is the thing I was talking about. So when there's batteries in, we should have power going up that yellow one. The yellow one goes to this here. That in turn goes to the battery here. But then it has to. Looks like there's some kind of diode and a resistor just all sort of soldered together. Is that a diode? I wonder with a resistor on it. And this thing must be the thing that... There's another resistor there. I don't know if it's some sort of voltage regulator or something. Uh, one, two, three legs. Could it be a transistor? I don't know. But then it goes off with these two wires to this thing here. So when that flashes, this must put a pulse through to here, like a bit of voltage or something through to here to let this know that it's flashed, and then it joins these two wires together to move the motor on. That must be something along those lines. I've probably got it completely wrong. Right, so uh, let's put the batteries in and see if we get any measurements anywhere. See, if that kind of light thing that the text light's faulty, then that's going to be quite hard for me, but maybe there's other ones out there, maybe there's a forum out there that says, you know, when these things go wrong. But when I looked up originally, there wasn't a huge amount of information on this. So that should be on right now because th those things are touching. So we should have voltage around the place. Let's just make sure our battery terminals are okay. So we got, I didn't really trace where all the batteries go, did I? Let's have a look on this side a second. Contact. I should really have a look, see what's happening. So this one goes, that's the on and off, and from there it travels up on a yellow wire. I get that. Then this side here, what does this side do? Don't understand. Oh, okay, so this side doesn't do anything, it just joins the wires together. This one here is then in contact with this. So when this touches this, it should make the motor work. Ah, right, okay, so this should make the motor work all the time, I think, but then when it's in that little groove and this thing separates, then it must be the firing off the shot that makes the motor work until this thing comes back up here again. Right, I think that's what it is. Whoa. So right now, why is that motor not working? Let's go between here and here. About 1.5 volts. Go between here and here. 1.5. Now surely between here and here it should be more than 1.5. Oh, it is. Yeah, 3 volts. 3.1. So, uh, oh, here we go. So, what's happening is this thing here is playing up, I think. Look, oh, but then it keeps going. The 
when we move it, it kicks off. I think there's a, a bit of a dirty contact here between this one here because when or is, it the, is, is light getting in here? Is that the problem? Right, so that stops. Let go. Why is it not working now? But now if we shine light into here, it should work. Right, okay. And then when it goes to there... Right, let's work this out a minute. So, right now, it's in the position where it's in the notch. A bit of light comes in, which moves it on, and then that will move up to there, and then the light gets covered, and then that stops. That's exactly how it works. So remember now, I'm getting light because this room is light. So right now, this wouldn't be in the notch, but as soon as I take my finger off here, the motor's gonna start. Then I have to put my, because look, if I just do this, it's gonna go, but then when I stop that, it's gonna stop. No, it's not. So I've gotta do, got do that. So, right, okay. That's how it is normally. Our next notch, shot fire happens goes off, that goes in there, gets covered up, and then next notch. And then shot, that gets up, covered up. That's it, isn't it? Hope you, hope you can see what I'm doing. I have to angle it this way because I need the light coming in from the window. So fire, up, cover, next notch. Fire, up, cover, next notch. Yeah, so it should be working. I just need to clean it. I just need to clean it up a little bit, I think. Clean it up, I'm gonna put a tiny little bit of grease on here and here, just a tiny little bit. So I'm gonna clean up the contact between here and here, and also I think I'm gonna do the on and off switch as well, make sure that that's nice and clean under there. But apart from that, I don't think I need to do anything else. something to do with it as well. I've just noticed that this is going to be pushed up by the notches in here. Uh, but then look, when, when this thing moves down here, it's going to force it down, isn't it? And then I suppose that just wax the can, wax the can up like that. Right, okay, so it's all kind of tied in, all tied in together. But the spring and everything is intact. It's a little bit rusty, but it's obviously still doing its job. I think I'm going to give everything a bit of a clean. Scrape this back so it's nice and hard again. I'm just going to wash this with some warm soapy water and a toothbrush just to get rid of the rest of that residue. Right, thinking about it, I'm not going to put grease on it because otherwise the grease is going to end up transferring onto here and then dirt and stuff is going to go on it. It's not something that moves particularly fast. It sounds like it's going to be noisy anyway. A lot of the old toys are noisy. So uh, it doesn't look to me as if that was ever packed with grease. Otherwise, I might end up causing problems. It might end up flipping up into there or something like that and then blocking up that thing that detects the light. So what I am going to do is I'm just going to give this a clean here because you can see it's quite uh, it's just a bit dirty and stuff from where it's been stored in the box. So I'm just going to give this a good clean and then we can... Uh, we can put it together and see what it does. Right, okay, so that's looking a little bit cleaner. If it's all working at the end, then I can clean all the plastic to make it nice again. Now, look what I've just found, which is quite interesting. If you have a look here, it says, 1976 Ideal Toy Corporation, New York. Look at that. So, 100% this is the one from 1976, which I am pleased about. Now, what's also interesting is, I better not show this, but uh, it's stamped with a name, William Lang, and it's got an address, and it says here, let me see where it's from, and a phone number. Fife. 
It's from Fife originally. So obviously whoever got this to begin with must have stamped stamped their thing on the inside because then if it was stolen it would have been traceable again. So that's interesting. I'll uh, I'll show you I'll show you what it is apart from the the street number and also thing. Now if you have a look just where I just showed you now, if you look closely, can you actually see in black there's a stamp on it there? It says Fife. That's good, isn't it? Right, okay, so uh, let's pop this back together and see, see what's happening with it. You can see there that when that is in there, it touches that. Oh no, it doesn't touch it. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe it has to touch it. Okay, maybe I need to bend it up more because when it goes in here, it should drop down. I'm not going to do anything yet because maybe when it's all bolted into the track that it will touch it. If not, what I might have to do is just take that out and slightly bend it up, which won't be any bother at all. So if you have a look, there's five holes here. One, two, three, four, five. And we do get five Pepsi cans as well. Now I'm thinking it must have been Pepsi for the UK because maybe... Maybe we didn't have Dr. Pepper back then. I'm not sure. I definitely remember having Dr. Pepper years ago, but maybe it was after 1976. For me, it would have been anyway, because uh, obviously <laughs> I wouldn't have been having it when I was a baby. So now I understand the inside of it. In theory, when we move this, it should kick in immediately because remember, it's not on one of these things. The only time it shouldn't work is when it's in one of these divot things here, in one of these little uh, bits that go in, yeah? There and there. So if we were to start it, for example, here, it should then move on to the next one, to my knowledge anyway. That's what I think. So let's pop the batteries in. Let's see what happens. Let's put it all back together so it's done properly. Right, okay, so let's turn it on. So now it should, when we move this here, well, let's actually turn it off for a second. Let's move it back to this side. This is where it starts. Let's turn it on. I'm moving it over a little bit. So now, in my reckoning, this should be working, and it's not. And it works like that because what's happening is that thing on the inside is probably now making contact. So let's move it on a little bit. Yeah. I reckon it's that thing that I showed you earlier. It needs to be bent up more. That's what I think anyway. So I'm going to try it. If I'm wrong, I can always move it back down again. Right, so very simply, what we're going to do is we're going to take this out. I'm going to bend it up. So now let's see what that does now when I go into one of those things. No, so I've bent that too much. Unless of course it's this that's doing the that's doing it. Unless of course it's this that's doing it, and maybe Maybe it's not that. Do you know what? Maybe I should try it. Maybe I should try it with a lot of pressure on it. Maybe I should try it like that to begin with because I've bent that up so it's in permanent contact apart from when this thing moves it down. Yeah? 
Maybe it's this that controls it and not these tiny little things here. I don't know. We'll give it a go. Right, let's turn it on now. Actually, it should be on. Okay, okay, so it was just it just kept on going there. So let's uh, do this, put it upright and see what it does. So obviously that's not right. At least now it is working. I'm gonna to try to hold the track in place. You're probably not getting this on the camera. Okay. Yes, that's it. And then when the next fire goes off, it will move along a bit. And then it should move on to the next one. So if I just move it a small bit now. Right, so it missed, it definitely missed one of them out. But maybe that's because this is all loose. Let's see if it will do the last one. Yes, it did, didn't it? So, I think, I think we might have it. Let's pop, pop it back together. Let's see what it does. So it's obviously the ski jump here, uh, not the little tiny bits in there that stop it. Okay, so I'm going to move it all the way over this side. And now we're going to turn it on and use the gun and see if it does actually work. Right, so that's stopped there, which is good. Now let's see what happens. So, bring this down, cock it, try to get our aim. Nope. Yes! And I'm pretty sure it flipped up there as well. Kick the can up. Too high. Fantastic! It appears to be working. Now, I don't know if it's kicking the cans yet. You know, let's get a can. Right, let's balance the cans here. Let's see if it is strong enough to knock it off. Yay! And it takes about a second. This is like a, a split second delay before it does kick it off. Which I suppose is, well actually I suppose it would be nearly instant, but it's kind of nice because then it feels like it is actually firing it. No. And it looks like you have to be very accurate. Ah, oh, that's brilliant. And this one here. What a nice fix. And I haven't had to spend... Whoa, that was a strong one. I haven't had to spend any money on it. And then what you would do is you would reload it back up to the beginning again. Like that. Brilliant. So it does appear to be working fine. I'm going to turn it off for the time being. So what I have to do now is I'm going to give it all a clean because there's a few sort of uh, scrapes and stuff on it. I've got to be careful because I want to keep this sticker down here. And then I'm going to have to find a bolt to go through here so I can put this on. It's a shame because in the packaging to make it smaller they didn't have this on it and that's the reason that this particular bolt is missing. So I'm going to, I'm going to see, I'm going to have a look just in case I have got one somewhere or other. But if not, I'm going to have to buy myself one. Uh, but yeah, what a what a lovely toy. And I can see why it would have been very expensive at the time. I need to look into the price when it was new and compare that to you know what that's worth, what that's worth nowadays. But I bet you that this toy probably would have been one of those toys that would have cost, I reckon this might have been an equivalent of a, a hundred pounds toy. If I'm honest with you, I think this would be I think this would have been expensive back in the day. Maybe even maybe possibly even a little bit more. Right, okay, so uh yeah, I'm just gonna be cleaning it. There's no point in me showing you doing that. All I'm gonna do is be getting a wet wipe and then kitchen towels and giving it all a rub over. And then what we'll do is I'll set this up in the kitchen with the lights off to make it a bit better. But even now, in this light here, you've seen it working. And I think uh when my son comes home from school, we'll have a game with this. And I'll have a quick look, see if I can get a bolt for that. But yeah, as far as I can see, it's all it's all good. 
Okay, so I've been cleaning up the box and the polystyrene and you know, it's come out really, really good. I'm really happy with this one. And look what I discovered when I was looking around the place. If you look here, it's got the original price on it. So if you have a look there, I thought it was an item number, but can you see there, that's a pound sign. £29.95. Now, I don't know when this particular one was sold, but if it was in 1983, then £30, which is 29.95 just about 30 pound in 1983 is same as 96 pound now now i don't know what this would have been in 76 but let's say if it was 30 pound in 76 you're looking at 205 pound now so i presume when it first all come out it must have been a bit less than that but i remember that this definitely was an expensive toy uh, £30 in 1980 would have been £122 now. So I actually thought that it was more... For some reason, I remember this being really expensive, but comparing that to things like the Big Track and stuff, it seems to be about the same kind of price. So, uh, yeah, but then again, you know, for me, the Big Track was too expensive for a toy when I was a kid anyway, so I think that this would have been out of the league of most parents. But look how good it's come out. Cleaned up the polystyrene and stuff as well. So now I think anybody would be happy receiving this. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's come out really, really good. And what I did is I've got the little bolt here as well, but let me put it all together and then I'll show you that. So basically I went to my dad's shed and I managed to get myself a bolt and a nut that fits perfectly. But even the polystyrene, it's by no means perfect, but uh, there's some staining where the batteries have obviously leaked underneath here. But what I've done is I've given it all a good wipe and it's come up a lot better. So there's still staining, a few cracks around the place. But it's come up really good. Right, so let's set this up. And then I'm going to have a contest with my son. So it's not going to look as nice as the original one because I think the original one would probably be some sort of cap or something that would fit in there. But it looks absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. So now with the cans, I managed to get the dents. Remember there was one that was really dented and there was a couple of dents on others as well. I managed to get it out. I'm trying to think which one it was. I think it might have been this one here. By just doing the good old fashioned thing of just squeezing it gently until it pops out. You can see that it's still dented, but it's gonna get dense, especially if you're playing this high up. If this is falling to the floor, you're gonna get dense. But what I did is, these were already slightly broken here like this anyway. I don't wanna push them anymore. But I just blew in there. Well, I had to cover up one and blow in the other one. And then the pressure of that was popping it out, especially when I was just giving it a little squeeze. So now every single tin, actually is in really good condition. Now I noticed when I was doing it that they've got these little stickers on and I thought maybe somebody had just stuck them on, you know, from a different toy, but then I noticed it was the same colour as the tin can alley down there. So I had a look online and basically these are bullseyes. So with your gun, you're gonna be aiming the sight through here and at the end here, because normally a bullet would come out of here. But the light is underneath it, like you've seen working earlier. So obviously, to get the light to hit this, we need to take aim at the bullseye. So they haven't all got them. But essentially, if we were to aim at the bullseye, then the light should correspond. And what they say in the instructions, which I haven't got, they say that you need to put this bullseye two and seven eighths of an inch. So there's no centimeters or millimeters or anything. It's two and seven eighths to get to that height there. So I think that was about right. And some of the others seem to be a little bit on the high side. But me and my son have been playing this. And to be fair, I mean, I don't know how to aim a gun, but it's, uh, to me, what I do is I take a shot, and then if it hits here, for example, and I want to go there, then all I do personally is just aim it a little bit lower and to the left. And maybe in about one in 10 goes, we're getting it, which is probably not very good, but at the same time, practice makes perfect. So if you have a look here, uh, the first two are already down, the mechanism at the back is over that one there. If I just get a simple torch and shine it in here, you will see that it will go. And then on this one here, so you can see how it works now. And it works absolutely perfectly. So what we're gonna do now is, I think me and my son might have about, I don't know, maybe 20 goes each. I'll be just fast forwarding through the video and we're gonna see who can hit the most or whether we can hit even one. And the distance we're doing it from is just gonna be from the cushions here. So not a long distance away, just a couple of meters and we'll see how we go. So let's get set up. In fact, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll get my son in now and he can help me set this up.
Okay, so I've just flipped this on its front and I've turned it off. So now we're going to have to squeeze this bit. So I'm going to get this, my son to do it. No, you've got to squeeze. That's turning it on. So turn that off. We've got to squeeze this between there and there. And now you've got to slide it all the way over to the side. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Right, and now we're just going to put it upright and then we turn it on and you'll see it will move to the first place. So we're sliding the switch off. Basically, this is working perfectly now, so it's really good news. So now we're going to load the Pepsi cans on. It's even nice as well, just while you're lowering that, then I'm just going to show the viewers this. If you have a look here, it's even got like the ingredients, and look at that. It says Schweppes St. Albans. That's not far from me at all. And it says Keep Britain Tidy. So uh, that was about throwing your litter in the bin. So it is nice how they've done this. Obviously, Pepsi must have... I don't know whether they would have sponsored this or whether the... Uh, company who made this again uh, one second so this is made by ideal so I don't know whether Pepsi would have paid ideal or whether ideal would have paid Pepsi or maybe it was just a mutual thing because it's going to be of benefit to both of them to have a branded product on this so uh, stickers and everything it really is in really good condition so how much uh, shots do you want to do Ben should we do 10 or 20 we're just gonna be fast forwarding 20 right okay so uh, what you have to do with it is you have to line the gun up completely straight with each of them because remember the light was at the end of the tube so if you go at an angle it's not going to work. So here we go, 20 goes, we'll fast forward through, Ben's going to shoot first, whoever gets the most after 20 shots is going to be crowned the rifleman. Well, very close. Now, just to show you what it's like with the lights off, you will see the lights shine up more now. There you go. Hopefully, you can see that. I'll do one more with the light off, Ben. Okay, you can take those two shots again because it was too dark to see. Right, so I'm just going to fast forward through this now. Right, that's one down. It makes the right racket as well when it's uh, when you get one. Very close. What number? What number is this? Have you been keeping count? Uh, no. <laughs> I haven't either. Let's say that was. Let's say that was number. This can be your. Should we say ninth shot? You've definitely had about yeah. nine, haven't you? Yeah. Okay. This this can be your ninth. Oh wow! Oh look at that. <laughs> Oh, what? Oh, no! You've got... Ten, was that your tenth? So you've got nine yeah. to go. Oh, what is going on? You won't even need all 20 shots. Oh, oh. luck's run out. Is it luck or skill? Which one is it? Skill. You reckon? Oh, wow! Right, so you did that all. I wasn't counting, but I think you did that in about 15 shots. So now it's my turn. Well, we're going to load it up again, and let's see, uh, let's see how I do. I'll tell you what, it is actually a good game, and I don't think you get bored of it that quick because it takes a lot of skill. I mean, I'm amazed Ben managed to do that, if I'm honest with you, because we were playing this earlier and uh, we weren't having that sort of success at all. And also, we're very near. You can imagine now, if we were to step back maybe four, four meters away, then it would start to get really hard. Right, Ben, if you could film me. Way too low. Right, so if you look, you do that and listen to the click. And it clicks into place and now it's ready to be fired. So all that's doing is pushing the spring back. And remember earlier on I was confused about the spring? Well, that's because it gives you a nice feeling when you press it. It does, obviously it doesn't feel like firing a gun, but it feels nice and strong. Oh! Four to go. Oh. 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 
what's can you what, what number is it? I won't know until I watch the video. Probably there. like the fourteenth. Do you reckon? Or thirteenth. I think you've won then, have you? Actually, I just I'll just say twelve. No, no, I think that was number fourteen. Ooh, so close. Have a time a little bit to the left hand side. Oh, yeah. I think this is my 18th one, is it? Mm, I think this is my 18th one. Oh, oh, oh. You can either last get this one. one. Last one. Last get shot it. and last one. Oh, oh no. yeah. Right, one for luck. One for luck. Ah. Now I have one more go because how fun it is. Yeah, okay. You try and get the last one. Okay. Shooter. So I think in this contest here we have to crown Ben the Rifleman Champion. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have to list this on eBay, take lots of nice pictures and stuff, and I'm hoping I should be able to make a profit on this. Right, so let's just try it further away. My son's just going to do this now, so the competition's over. Unfortunately, I lost that one. But so uh, this is now 11 feet away. I had a look at the box, and it reckons it will work up to 25 feet away, which is a, a fair old distance. But let's try it now. It's certainly a lot harder when you're doing it from this distance. So I'm just going to fast forward through this. Yay, there Yay. we go. Sharp Shooter does it again. The Rifleman, Ben. I'm really happy to say it is working perfectly. It's not a case where it only works like one in every four or five goes. Every time you cock the gun, it works. And the movement over there, since I've been playing with it, has been working perfectly and smoothly. So really happy with this fix. So obviously now it's going to take me a couple of weeks to sell the thing, but as far as you lot are concerned, you're going to see what it sells for now in a few seconds. So for this part of the video, I'm going to say bye. Ben, say bye. Bye. And uh, let's see what this thing sells for. It's actually a shame I wouldn't mind keeping this one because it does seem like a lot of fun, but that is part of the contest and part of the contest is that we have to sell the items. So uh, let's see what happens. So a few weeks have passed since you've seen that part of the video and this has actually sold but it hasn't been collected yet. I did it as collection only because I live very close to London so that was one of the benefits of living close to London is that uh, you have a huge, huge population of people living on your doorstep which is a nightmare when it comes to anything else in life but when it comes to selling stuff it means it's good because you have loads of people that's only a very short distance away. So I did it as collection only and it sold pretty much instantly. And I put it on for a really high price. And the reason I did that is because these are really strange. They seem to range in price from £40 all the way up to £180. So I thought, well, this works well. The condition isn't perfect, but at the same time, it's not bad at all. So I put it on for £125, which is a lot of money, but it did sell. Now, I haven't got that money yet, so there might be issues. But I'm thinking that... I think this would sell all day long for over £100 anyway, because right now in the UK, from what I've looked at, I think there's one for sale for £165 plus £18 postage, and there's one, and that looks to be complete, and there's one for sale for £45 plus £15 postage, so that's £60, which isn't working. And I think most people who buy these want to have a working one. So I've kind of put the, the price roughly in between them two, and it seemed to be successful. I have to take into account that I've included batteries in it, uh, and also, there was a few things in the video that I missed out. So one of them was, and I included this in the listing, one of them was the fact that I think there should be a site up here. Looking at the other ones on eBay, not all of them, but well, one at least, I've definitely seen some kind of site that goes on this top bit here. Now, I'm not exactly sure what it looks like or what it should do, because the one with the site seems to be a different kind of model to this one. 
but I'm thinking there should be something up there that's missing. But saying that, I can't actually see where it would fit on the box. So I've included it in the eBay thing, but I might be wrong. Maybe I've said that the site's missing. Maybe there shouldn't be a site, I don't know. I mean, if you look up here, there definitely is something up here. But then again, that gun looks like a real gun. It doesn't look like this model here. Uh, I said that there was a non-standard bolt, and as well as that, maybe incorrectly, I said that the box was incomplete because I believe that there should be cardboard on this bottom bit. And the reason I'm thinking that is because if it was supposed to be a polystyrene bottom, I would have thought that the bottom would have been like flat, like a Skeletrix box, so then that they could all pack nicely on each other in the shops. But this is all hollow, which makes me think that maybe there should be a cardboard bottom. But the one that's on eBay at the moment for £165 also doesn't appear to have a cardboard bottom, so I could be wrong. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert in these things, so I don't know. Also, when I edited this video back, I realised that I took apart the gun without fully testing it. So remember, I've never had one of these, so I didn't know how it worked. But basically, when I watched the video back, I realised that I didn't actually fully cock the gun, I believe that's what you call it. So I didn't... Hold on. Oh, come down. There we go. I didn't make it go all the way like this until it clicked. And unless you go all the way until it clicks, it's not going to fire. Yeah. So maybe there was nothing wrong with the gun. Unfortunately, I don't know, but I took it apart anyway. It was no harm to take it apart. It was interesting to see the inside, especially that huge massive capacitor in there. At least now, myself and you lot watching it know how the gun works. But in hindsight, the gun might not have been faulty because I didn't actually see if it was working properly or not because I was just pressing this thinking it would be some sort of on and off switch but it's not, is it? So, uh, but 100% the fence was faulty. So if you've watched the video now, you might be thinking, yeah, Vince wasn't using it properly. I am now aware of that. Uh, what else? That was about it, really. So let me just show you the listing. Right, here it is here. You can see it's ended. Listing's ended. £125 and uh, I said it's fully working, it works well but the sight's missing, the bolt holding the handle is non-standard and I said about the box as well. Just an example of some of the other ones, you see this one here is £45 but that was either faulty or untested, I can't remember and this one here is £165 but it does look to be in great condition with the instructions as well. So huge variation in prices which makes something like this very interesting because it's all to do with timing really. If there was 20 of them for sale on eBay, then you might be unlucky and you might only get £50 for yours. But if you happen to put it on when there's only one, or let's say if you put it on when there's only this one for sale, because I think at this moment in time, there's only these two for sale. Uh, if you put it on, obviously depending on when you watch the video, but when you uh, put yours on, if it was just yours and this one here, then if yours was up for like £130 and it had instructions in a box, then somebody's going to think, well, yeah, I'm definitely going to go for that because it's £30 cheaper for this. But then another time a year, you might get one with instructions in a box looking great for £80. It just depends on how many people are selling it at that time. So when somebody says, how much is something worth? The honest answer is, however much somebody is willing to pay for it at that particular moment in time, because... In three weeks' time, there might be 10 of these on eBay, and obviously the price is going to be much It's going to be much more competition, so the price is going to be right down because there might not be 10 people looking to buy. But then, two months after that, there could be 10 people looking to buy, and there might only be two of these on eBay, in which case then the price is going to be much higher, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, very interesting one, this one. And out of all of them, I think this is one of those ones where possibly you could make a nice bit of money because it's rare enough that there's not many of them for sale and the price seems to be all over the place. So very interesting one. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Apologies for the length of it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for the rest of this series to me and also Tronics Fix as well. Take care. Bye now.